BMW's X7 classily meets the needs of wealthy buyers wanting a super luxury large SUV and needing to seat up to seven adults. It's essentially a supersized X5, but it makes far more of a pavement statement and inside feels very high end indeed. If you don't much care what the neighbours think, or perhaps even if you do, then you'd probably quite like one. Not every new car these days is designed with a specific eye on European buyers. Take this one, the BMW X7, an enormous luxury seven-seat SUV primarily aimed at customers in America, the Middle East, China and various Asian markets. But BMW thinks better-heeled buyers with larger families here may like one too. You might have thought the Munich maker would have made an SUV like this before now. Uh, their X5 has, after all, defined the large SUV class for over two decades amongst Mercedes GLEs and Porsche KNs. But the company has never fielded a bigger 4x4 or a proper seven-seat version of this kind of car to take on the larger Mercedes GLS, the sort of product that would begin to interest the kind of customer who would usually be browsing in the super luxury large SUV segment where the Range Rover rules. The X7, launched in late 2018, is tasked with attracting exactly this well-heeled brand of buyer. Now, if you've previously heard anything about this car, you'll have already gathered that it's quite a size. But of course, that's relative to your point of comparison. Now, true, it is a little bigger than a Range Rover, but you'd expect that given that the X7 has an extra row of seats. It's actually a little smaller than its most obvious rival, the Mercedes GLS. And it's considerably smaller than the ultimate contender that you could have in this class, the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. Even so, this is easily the most substantial and certainly the heaviest piece of automotive real estate that BMW has ever brought us. Uh, the brand wants us to think of this car less as a supersized X5 and more as an alternative to the boardroom segment 7 Series Saloon with which it shares that imposing front grille. The X7's underpinnings though are shared directly with the X5 as are many other things, the standard air suspension and the optional off-road package for example. Plus the two cars roll down the same American Spartanburg production line. This one though will be a far more exclusive site in our market. It is, according to its maker, a triumph of spatial thinking. Well, certainly, if you want the very best SUV in the world and it has to seat seven, you'd need to consider it. So, time to put this car to the test. BMW was the first manufacturer to make a large luxury SUV that didn't fall about when presented with a corner at speed. So if anyone was going to be able to make a 5.1 meter Leviathan weighing the best part of two and a half tons handle sensibly, you'd have to think that this Munich maker would be in with a chance. It's not that an SUV this big can't in theory be agile. The issue is more that if you make it so, it would be very easy for an unskilled driver to get into trouble and to corner too quickly or get a tank slapper on in something this tall and heavy and you're not going to recover it easily. Which is why brands like Mercedes, Bentley and Rolls-Royce give their super large luxury SUVs a very conservative dynamic setup. Handling that doesn't encourage you to push on into the corners with any kind of verve at all. If you ever do, vague steering feel, body roll and understeer discourage you from repeating the experiment. Now the X7 was originally developed that way too. No one was going to expect anything this large to be the ultimate driving machine. So it didn't matter, right? Well, the end result though just didn't feel very BMW. The engineers were uncomfortable and they sought permission from Munich to try something different. Uh, they would make the X7 as agile as it could be. Then they would layer on software for the steering, uh, for the differential, the suspension and the all-wheel drive system to keep owners out of trouble. Instantly, the development prototype went five seconds quicker round the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Yet, also, it felt up to dealing with the much greater challenge of looking after a ham-fisted, inattentive driver. Uh, the team then knew that they'd found the sweet spot. 
as was necessary given the potential power of some of the engines on offer, all of which, as expected, are shared with the X5. Around 60% of X7 buyers opt for the uh, three-liter straight-six turbo diesel unit of the X-Drive 30D variant, which puts out a relatively modest 265 horsepower, but thanks to 620 newton meters of torque, doesn't struggle too much in an SUV of this sort of size. In fact, the engine actually propels the base version of this car along at a very respectable rate, uh, really getting into its stride between 2,000 and 3,500 RPM, particularly if you take control yourself with the steering wheel paddle shifters. Thanks to a quick-witted eight-speed Steptronic Sport Auto gearbox featuring launch control, 62 from rest is reached in seven seconds exactly, and the irrelevant top speed is 141 miles an hour. The mainstream alternative to the volume diesel variant is the X-Drive 40i, uh, which uses another straight six, this one petrol powered and delivering 340 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. With this unit, the 62 miles an hour sprint takes 6.1 seconds on the way to 152 miles an hour. Now those two variants represent the starting point for prospective X7 buyers, but if budgetary limitations are less of an issue, then you're going to want to consider one of the full-fat m fettled versions. Possibly you might have your eye on the top petrol M50i, which offers 530 horsepower and can somehow spirit nearly 2.5 tonnes of prime Bavarian automotive real estate past 62 miles an hour in just 4.7 seconds. That makes it only around a second slower than a Ferrari Portofino. <laughs> Uh, more probably, though, you'll prefer to look at the particular X7 version we're trying here, the M50D diesel. This uses a multi-stage turbocharging system composed of two high-pressure and two low-pressure turbochargers. The combined setup delivers 400 horsepower and a prodigious 760 newton meters of torque. That's sufficient to push this model line's usual 2.2-ton brake tone weight capacity up to 2.6 tons, and it's also enough to trim the standard sprint time down to 5.4 seconds and allow for a maximum speed that would probably push on past 180 miles an hour if it wasn't for the limiter that cuts in 25 miles an hour earlier. At times, we've found that this M50D can feel almost supercar quick on a par with an Audi R8 V10 in the 30 to 70 miles an hour overtaking increment and almost as fast as a Lamborghini Murcielago over a standing kilometer. Uh, now, with this kind of pace on offer, it's appropriate that BMW equips the M50D as standard with an M Sport differential, an electronically controlled rear differential lock powered by an electric motor and governed by the car's DSC driving stability control system. When you're cornering at speed, this setup allows as much as 1,500 newton meters of drive torque to be redirected from a faster turning wheel to a slower turning one, helping to fire you from bend to bend. Now, we'll also point out that the M50D's got very good brakes, and for a diesel, it makes a pretty good noise, too. And mind you, all versions of this BMW sound pretty good orally, thanks to a clever bit of software that enhances the engine note through the stereo speakers. Whatever your choice of engine, it will come packaged up with BMW's usual drive performance control driving mode system, uh, the normal Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus settings, as usual tweak steering, throttle response, uh, gear change timings and stability control thresholds to suit the way that you want to drive. And they influence ride quality too, thanks to a variable damping control setup, which allows you to tweak the settings of the standard air suspension. Now, for those of you who can't decide between the modes available, there's an extra adaptive setting that you'll probably end up selecting nearly all the time, just as we've done. Uh, now, the advantage of doing that not only lies in your being relieved of the need to make all the decisions about driving setup, uh, the computer software does all that for you, but it also lies in the way that predictive technology is introduced into the process. The system uses the sat-nav to prime the car for upcoming hazards like sharp bends and junctions. It all works so smoothly that you're never really aware that so much is going on behind the scenes to make your journey smoother and more efficient. 
but that's the kind of system that would complete the luxury demeanor of a rival Mercedes GLS or an even more expensive Bentley Bentayga in the super luxury SUV segment. As we suggested earlier though, the X7 aims to be more than just a large luxury saloon on steroids, as you'll discover when you click into one of these sport driving modes. Now these tighten up body control, add extra weight to the steering and drop the car 20 millimeters closer to the tarmac at speeds over 86 miles an hour. As all this is happening, a sport display in the car section of the center dash infotainment display can show you G-force readings, uh, plus torque horsepower, oil temperature, and turbo boost readouts. To some extent, this car can shrink around you at speed once its dimensions become familiar. And once it does, uh, you might easily convince yourself that you were in a significantly smaller luxury SUV. The speed with which the X-Drive four-wheel drive system subtly shuffles power around through the bends really helps the handling, of course. And now the current version of this setup is able to split drive torque between the front and rear wheels with great precision. And of course, it offers a rear biased drive distribution appropriate to this BMW's dynamic demeanor. As usual, the system is based around a Haldex style multi-plate clutch that can push up to 80% of the drive to either the front or all the rear wheels to suit whatever tractional needs you happen to have. X7 buyers who like the idea of power going to both ends of the car might also like the idea of steering taking place at both front and rear axles too. That's what you get with the integral active steering system. Uh, it's optional on the 30D and 40i variants and standard on the full M models. This uses a variable steering rack ratio that works as you turn the wheel, moving the rear wheels in either of two ways depending on how fast you're going. Now parking speed the rear wheels will turn in the opposing direction to those at the front for greater maneuverability. If you're going much more quickly than that though, at speed through tight corners, the rear wheels will turn in the same direction as those at the front and that gives you greater stability and agility. If your X7 has integral active steering fitted, uh, you'll also be offered the option of paying extra for what BMW calls its Executive Drive Pro Pack, which delivers the brand's latest anti-roll stabilization technology. Now this setup uses automatically adjustable anti-roll bars that give you lots of suspension movement for a great ride in a straight line, uh, yet spring into action through the bends to compensate for the body roll that you'd otherwise get. And of course, when you match all this up with the benefits of that adaptive driving performance control setting we were talking about earlier with its predictive navigation data that anticipates and allows for the next bump or turn, you have all the ingredients for a beautiful ride and handling balance. There's even a degree of semi-autonomous driving capability if you then further add in all the many and varied electronic camera-driven features that come with the optional driving assistant professional pack. Even if you choose not to equip your X7 with all this kind of kit, you'll find this BMW an exceptionally accomplished highway touring device. Uh, you really need to be on the highway to experience this car at its best. At lower speeds, uh, the air suspension struggles rather more than you'd expect with things like potholes and speed humps, and the diesel engines aren't especially silent when they're idling or ambling along. Uh, once up to speed, though, refinement is exemplary. In fact, on ordinary tarmac, we've not tried a quieter SUV in this class. It is worth mentioning though that on broken asphalt the big wide tyres generate a significant amount of roar. We'll finish as we usually do with an SUV with a few words on the provision or more usually the lack of provision of off-piste prowess. Um, the X-Drive 4x4 system on offer here might not be set up for mud plugging but it's still more capable than most owners will ever need it to be uh, using its electronically actuated multi-plate clutch and the cleverness of BMW's dynamic stability control system to alter drive from the normal 4060 front to rear bias to 100 100% front or rear as necessary. As you'd want, hill descent control is standard to ease you down slippery slopes, and the inclusion of a standard air suspension means you can select the exact level of ground clearance you need for the terrain you're tackling. If you use this center console switch, uh, you can raise the body in two stages, up to a maximum of 40 millimeters above its standard setting, and at its loftiest point, you'll be sitting 221 millimeters from the deck. 
When you are off tarmac, the standard parking assistant plus surround view camera system is a boon. It allows you to see images of each individual wheel on the infotainment screen as if you were viewing them from the outside of the car. So if you're about to drive over a rock, a tree or a precipice, you can see it. Plus there's an X view screen in the car section of the center dash infotainment display that shows you your air suspension setting, your compass bearings, your altitude and your driving angles. For that rare breed of X7 buyer likely to be regularly using this car on rough trails, the Munich maker offers an optional X off-road pack, uh, which is available on the 30D and 40i variants, not fitted with the anti-roll stabilization executive drive pro package. The X off-road pack gives you a sump guard, a mechanical differential lock, specific driving screen interfaces, and a series of transmission and suspension settings for various different surfaces. Uh, the additional modes are back X sand, X rocks, X gravel and X snow. Of course it could be argued that in specking up an X7 for ultimate mud plugging prowess you're somehow missing the point of this car or you could take the point of view that a version of this BMW specified in X off-road form would be close to being the ultimate tarmac or trail conveyance. Both perspectives are valid. US, Asian and Middle Eastern buyers want their luxury SUVs to be big and very imposing. So the X7 is. If you want one here, that's what you're going to like about it. Is this huge oversized front grille a step too far? Well, not if you take the view that there's simply no point in a car that's 5.15 meters long, 2 meters wide and over 1.8 meters high being aesthetically shy and retiring. This one certainly isn't. The other reason this grills here is because BMW's other super luxury product, the 7 Series Saloon, has it. If you started out perceiving this X7 merely as a supersized X5, which would be understandable given that it rolls out of the same US Spartanburg factory, then this Munich maker wants to correct you. The company is keen to position this car for a slightly different kind of buyer, someone who might normally consider a top luxury sedan like the 7 Series, but is attracted by the thought of extra space, more imposing aesthetics, and a little rough road capability. Now that might all sound logical, but in truth, the basic engineering of this model has far more in common with an X than a 7 Series, principally because it lacks the 7's carbon core construction, which sees extensive use of carbon fibre alongside aluminium and steel when it comes to structural elements. That's apparently too costly to productionize for a higher volume SUV. Uh, we mean higher volume in global terms, of course. No more than around 800 X7s will hit our roads each year, which will make it a suitably exclusive site, particularly in the top M50D guys we're trying here, which is distinguished from lesser 40i and 30d X7s by the cerium grey trimming that features on the side gills, the door sills, the tailpipes, the door mirrors, and, of course, on the front grille. It also trims these boomerang-shaped corner outlets that frame the horizontal LED fog lamps and the air curtain slits. Uh, the headlights, as you'd expect, are of the full LED variety, but BMW hopes that you'll want to upgrade them with the blue-tinged laser light technology that we've got here, which delivers a huge 600-meter long high-intensity beam. Uh, these, this substantial lower intake and the gigantic grille are all presumably intended to frighten fast lane dawdlers into submission, and probably will. Well, you'd certainly not be short of overtaking presence in one of these. Uh, from the side, you get more of a feel for the sheer size of this car. 229 millimeters longer than an X5. You'd expect that, but you might be surprised to find an X7 will also extend out of a parking space a full 52 mils further than the Range Rover. Emphasizing the length uh, is this upwardly angled mid-level crease that flows from the front wheel arch and then along below the door handles and into the substantial rear haunches. Further down, the big wheel arches are separated by a lower trim strip that uh, flows into the usual BMW vertical air breather situated behind the front wheel. And of course, of course, to suit the current zeitgeist, uh, the arches house simply huge rims that are 21 inches in size as standard. Uh, we've actually got even bigger 22 inch M V spoke bicolor rims here, through the spokes of which you glimpse the uh, blue calipers of the upgraded M Sport braking system. Subtle roof rails come in satin aluminium, or as in this case, in high gloss shadow line black. 
Uh, the rear end makes rather less of a statement, broken up by horizontal lines and bordered by vertical separating edges. Uh, now, BMW's resisted the temptation to follow the current trend for full-width lighting panels, so instead a chrome bar spans the tailgate, flowing into the taillights. Uh, that's another design cue supposedly uh, referencing the 7 Series. Uh, the lamps get full LED illumination, of course, and the obligatory skid plate is built into the lower part of this widely styled bumper. As usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. This car, like all of BMW's modern larger models, adopts the Munich Maker's stiff, sophisticated CLAR cluster architecture platform. Time to take a look inside. Now, with the right option box ticked, it's actually possible to unlock this long door with an Android smartphone, negating the need for any kind of key. Now, as you may be, we're deeply suspicious of this kind of technology, although the Munich Maker does boast about how difficult the incorporated NSC chip is to hack. But in any case, we think it's much nicer to use the classy provided display key, which incorporates a tiny integrated touchscreen. This allows all kinds of remote functions functionality. So, for example, you can see if you've locked the car, check how much fuel remains and even pre-warm or pre-cool the cabin before you get in. As is appropriate in such a large SUV, you climb up into the driver's seat of an X7 and you find yourself positioned commandingly. And of course, the way the cabin's been designed and trimmed feels appropriately high-end with real metal surfacing, cool ambient lighting, soft merino leather upholstery and a seamless transition between the instrument panel and the door trim that's very smartly executed. It's all very BMW. There's nothing wrong with that, of course, as long as you don't mind the fact that uh, many of of the very high quality fixtures and fittings are borrowed from models costing half as much as this one. Now, if your spend on this car happens to be arching up towards six figures, that might be a problem. Although we would point out that a rival Mercedes GLS has precisely the same issue. Now, for sure, the sort of memorable handcrafted finishing you'll get in a Bentley Bentayga would be preferable, but for that, you'd pay half as much again. Uh, BMW hopes that the kind of exotic feel that some better heel buyers might be seeking can be met, at least in part, by a few of this car's more exclusive options. Now, the cabin is certainly lifted by fittings like this gorgeous Alcantara headliner and the crystal-like crafted clarity glass finish that's available to trim the gear knob, uh, the fascia volume controller, the iDrive controller and the stop-start button. Plus, a further air of elegant sophistication is delivered by the intricate mesh speaker grills of the optional 20-channel Bowers & Wilkins Diamond Surround Sound System, and more significantly by the twin screens of the standard Live Cockpit Professional package. Now, that combines this 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster display with a center dash infotainment monitor of the same size, all of it accessible via touchscreen, the usual lower iDrive controller, uh, steering wheel buttons, your voice, and even gesture control, which, as on other BMW models, is frustrating to try to master. Still, the Munich Maker has matched and in some cases exceeded the current media connectivity class standard here. A sidebar menu on the center screen gives you media, communication, navigation, car and apps options, uh, which connect you into features like the 10-speaker DAB audio system, 4G LTE connectivity, uh, connected sat-nav, Wi-Fi hotspot, and a 20 gigabyte hard drive. It's all standard fare, as is a concierge service that connects you through to an operator to help with journeying info, and a wide range of BMW vehicle apps uh, to give you access to things like news reports and weather forecasts. Plus, the system can remotely update its own software too. Bear in mind, though, that some of the digital services on offer come included only for three years, and some like online connected music and Microsoft Office 365, which syncs in your emails and your calendar for just three months. After that, you have to pay, and to some extent, you can't help feeling that it's a case of the Munich maker giving with one hand and taking away with the other. There are other issues too. We'll continue to bemoan the fact that BMW still hasn't properly got on board with smartphone mirroring. You only get Apple CarPlay as standard for the first year and Android Auto functionality isn't offered at all, which just isn't acceptable in such an expensive car. Not everyone likes the functionality of this instrument binnacle screen either. The virtual speedometer and rev counter gauges, which symmetrically frame this display, use opposite swinging needles that can be 
visually confusing. And although you get sat-nav mapping in the center of the screen, uh, you can't expand the 3D navigation layout to completely fit it, as is possible with, say, Audi's virtual cockpit layout. On the plus side, though, there is no doubt that the whole instrument display and iDrive infotainment monitor combination is much easier and safer to use than the twin control screens and haptic feedback consoles that you'll get in the latest Audi and Range Rover models. BMW, we think, also has a slightly better handle on voice control than its rivals, and this advanced infotainment package includes what the brand calls an intelligent personal assistant. Now, this is a supposed fount of all knowledge that responds to voiced questions prefaced by Hey BMW, much as would the Alexa system, uh, Siri on an iPhone, or the Google Assistant feature on an Android handset. Now, BMW insists that this setup is rather cleverer than those ones. You can give it a name if you think that'll help you bond with it better, and the press kit tells us that we can even ask it the meaning of life. It's more likely, of course, that you'll be using it to make day-to-day -day driving just a bit easier. If you tell it you're cold, it'll turn up the temperature. If you don't understand a particular feature, it'll trot out explanatory text from the online handbook. Or you might want to check your oil level, uh, use it to look for fuel stations along your route, or read out your messages. Enough with connectivity, uh, what else do you need to know here? Well, perhaps that BMW seems to have a better handle than most makers on which functions are needed on the dash and which can live within on-screen menus. And the brand's standard comfort spec seats are superbly supportive, incorporating lumbar adjustment that can be moved up and down as well as in and out. In addition, a range of little touches make a lot of difference, uh, like the way that the temperature readouts are shown on small screens on the climate control panel rather than in hidden away monitor menus. Uh, we approve the light strips on the doors that illuminate in a pulsing red when they're open to act as a warning to other road users, although you'll only actually notice that at night. Uh, plus, we also like the optional head-up display that projects in large scale 3D and shows more information than systems of this sort usually do. And all-round visibility. Well, the fact that you can see the tops of the front wings from the driver's seat gives you a feeling of manoeuvrability and control uh, that some compensation for the fact that your over-the-shoulder vision is spoiled by all the rear head restraints and the chunky rear pillars between the rearmost side windows and the tailgate. Uh, not that parking this car should be too much of a problem. Uh, as well as all-round parking sensors, all X7s get BMW's Parking Assistant Plus surround view camera system and and a standard reversing assistant that activates with green or red strips on the steering wheel spokes and automatically reverses you along whatever path you'd previously taken forward. What else? Uh, well, cabin storage is pretty well catered for. This stowage area at the bottom of the center stack is accessed by this beautifully damped lid that slides back to reveal a wireless charging mat along with the USB port and a 12 volt socket and twin cup holders that can even be heated and cooled. That's one of our favorite options with this car. Uh, there is also this twin lidded box between the seats which incorporates a USB port. Uh, there's a storage cubby by the driver's right knee. There are ticket clips on the sun visors and there are huge large door pockets. Only an overhead sunglasses compartment is missing. Oh, and the glove box, which is normally reasonably big, will be halved in size if, as here, your car's been specified with the optional ambient air package, which infuses the interior with eight individually selectable scents. Uh, we'll also mention that, rather uniquely, it is possible to alter the four and a half positioning of the second row seats by this control on the driver's door. So if you think your passengers could be more comfortable, you can make them so yourself. Talking of uh, those in the back, it's time to take a look at the two rearmost seating rows. There's no doubt about it, when it comes to rear passenger space, size does matter. Or at least it does if your brief is to seat seven adults comfortably in an SUV. Now you might think that something like, say, a Bentley Bentayga is pretty large, but you'll still find that car to be pretty cramped if you happen to be in one in which the optional third seating row has been specified and you are combined in the very back. An X7 has 110 millimeters more wheelbase length than that Bentley. 
Now true, a competing Mercedes GLS gives you fractionally more and a Rolls-Royce Cullinan a little more again. But as for any other big SUV you can think of, forget it. An X7 is certainly in a different league from the Audi Q7, Volvo XC90 and Land Rover Discovery seven-seat models that most of the motoring press tends to talk inaccurately about alongside it, as we'll find out here. In terms of ease of access, it certainly helps that these back doors are longer than those at the front. Uh, once you take a seat in the second row, you'll quickly appreciate the generous legroom on offer that's made possible by this car's lengthy 3,105mm wheelbase. We've got the X7 in its standard 7C configuration here, which gives you this three-person bench. Uh, your alternative is to specify the optional six-seater package, which instead fits out the second row with two individual comfort spec seats, similar to those at the front, each with their own armrests and cushioned headrests. That'll give second row folk more luxury and more room to spread out plus it'll make it easier to get to the rearmost seating row but of course it lean compromises in terms of seat folding flexibility and obviously passenger capacity on balance uh, we'd prefer to stick with this bench after all, it's not as if you're lacking luxury here. You get these exquisitely cushioned headrests plus electric seat controls for the two outer positions that adjust the backrests and move the powered seat bases through a range of 145 millimeters. More importantly, being able to take three folk in the middle part of the car might occasionally be useful to do, uh, something which is comfortably possible in an X7, not only because of its two meter width, but also because the central transmission tunnel is so notably low. If the central part of this bench had an isofix attachment, which unfortunately it doesn't, it would even be possible to mount three child seats alongside each other. If there are only two occupants back here, we will be able to use this armrest, uh, which incorporates a storage compartment and twin pop-out cup holders. Uh, seat back pockets are provided and there are decently sized door pockets with bottle holders. Plus you'll find a storage cubby and twin USB ports are provided below the central twin vents for the standard four zone climate control system. Uh, there are B pillar vents too. You're probably going to want to consider a few options for this part of your X7. Uh, we've got two key ones fitted here, principally this huge panoramic sky lounge glass roof. This includes 15,000 graphic patterns that generate an adaptable seat display reminiscent of a starlit sky. A more conventional glass roof comes as standard and neither roof setup unduly compromises headroom. Another option fitted to this car is the travel and comfort system which adds in an extra USB port to each seat back plus a little compartment with a sliding cover which conceals a multifunction bracket to which folk at the back can attach things like tablets. If you really want to spoil yourself you can also specify a rear seat entertainment package which incorporates a couple of 10.2 inch touch screens. Right, enough with that. Let's take a look at the third row. It's supposed to be adult friendly. Now, amongst other large seven seat SUVs, only this car's closest rival, the Mercedes GLS, dares to make that claim. Is it justified here? Well, let's see. Now, most of the time, squirming your way into the third seating row in a car of this kind requires a level of limbed flexibility that probably would defeat grandma on your weekly Sunday afternoon outing to the Gargan Centre, but she should be fine here. Uh, pushing the middle row seat out of the way isn't as quick as it would be if the operation was manually operated, but if you're not in a hurry, it's nice not to have to struggle with the usual awkwardly sprung mechanism. A press on this arrow button on the seat shoulder sees the chair move forward and eventually angle itself up in a fashion that leaves uh, quite a reasonably generous entry aperture. Once installed back here, there's pretty much the same sort of space as you'd find in a large MPV. And that's quite a statement to make when you're describing the third row in anything SUV-like. Cars like these almost always have high floor heights so as to leave space for the four-wheel drive mechanicals below, which means that in the very back of a typical seven-seater SUV, you usually have to sit with the knees up round your ears. Uh, that's not the case here. Now, true, there isn't quite as much legroom as there would be in that rival Mercedes GLS model. Uh, that's because the Merc has a 30 millimeter longer wheelbase, but it is vastly better than the cramped third row conditions that an adult would experience in, say, a Volvo XC90, an Audi Q7, or a Land Rover Discovery. Now, if you have a large family with grown-up teenagers, that could be a crucial consideration.
Now, if you happen to be using this third row for child seats, then you'll be pleased to find that this is one of the very few seven-seat SUVs on the market that incorporates ice-fix fastening into its third row chairs. Uh, there's a cup holder on both sides of the cabin, and as an option, you can also specify a five-zone climate control system with a specifically orientated third row zone with temperature and fan speeds activated by this roof panel. Ceiling vents are provided on both sides, and the rearmost side windows offer for a decent view out too. In short, what's on offer here is a first-class SUV that doesn't demote third-row passengers to third-class travel. OK, let's finish with a look at the boot. Now, if we're going to be absolutely accurate here, this isn't actually the first time the BMW Group has developed a super-large luxury SUV. Back at the turn of the century, the Bavarians actually paid for and part-developed the L322 series third-generation Range Rover when they owned Land Rover a couple of decades ago. And a carryover from that car that the Munich maker decided it rather liked is this two-piece tailgate. Here, of course, it's electrically powered and you can operate it with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper if you approach the car uh, laden down with bags. Uh, you will like the way that you can sit on this panel if, for instance, you want to put on your Wellington boots or if you merely like the whole tailgate picnic vibe. And on its outer edge, you'll find a button that will uh, lower the air suspension height by 40 millimetres and make it easier to get heavier items inside. You can also lower the back of the car via the display key or by using a rocker switch on the centre console. Now you won't be expecting much space inside the boot when all three seating rows are in place, but actually it's not bad at all. 326 litres, that's about the same as you get in the trunk of a Ford Focus, and it's enough for a couple of mid-sized suitcases. Uh, there's this neat branded mid-height shelf. Uh, there's a netted storage area on the right, a 12-volt socket on the right, and twin silver tie-down points. There's also more room beneath the boot floor, although only because BMW declines to offer any sort of spare wheel, even as an option and that's a decision that we fundamentally disapprove of in such a capable SUV. You can at least store the tonneau cover down here when that's not in use. Most of the time though you're going to want to fold these third row pews into the floor which requires use of this left hand bank of electric switches and will double the amount of cargo space on offer. Uh, if you happen to be uh, by the side of the car, there's another switch panel that will either retract or erect these third row chairs in the same way. Now, obviously, once you've done this, you can vary the amount of space on offer as needed by powering the middle row bench either forward or back. If you need more room, but it's only for long and thin items like skis, you'll be able to flatten the centre part of this 40-20-40 split rear bench. If that's not enough, then the whole uh, second row bench can be folded flat via more electric buttons. Now, once everything's flat, up to 2,120 litres of space is freed up. And now, the fact that this figure is 280 litres less than would be offered by a similarly configured Mercedes GLS is unlikely to unduly bother a typical X7 buyer. Bear in mind that if you happen to have deleted that second row bench and gone for the two separate chairs of the six-seater cabin layout we were talking about earlier, then your cargo capacity will be hugely reduced because the two middle row chairs won't fold flat. That. You probably won't be surprised at the need to pay at least £70,000 for the privilege of X7 ownership. Actually, the XDrive 30D 265 horsepower diesel variant that will take over 60% of sales was priced from launch uh, from just over £72,000. The alternative XDrive 40i 340 horsepower petrol model carries a £2,000 premium over the black pump fueled variant, so that will need a budget approaching £75,000. In both cases, there's the option of Ritz year M Sport trim for two and a half thousand pounds more. There are also a couple of M Fettel models. We've got one here, the 400 horsepower M50D, which from launch was priced from around £87,500. As an alternative at this level, your dealer will also offer you the 530 horsepower M50i petrol model, which needs a £91,000 budget. Now, we will also mention that there's just this single body style. That sounds an obvious thing to say, but BMW did actually show a pickup design study version of the X7. Yes, really. Although, apparently, there are as yet no plans to produce that. 
Let's give you some BMW range perspective on X7 pricing. Now, you're looking at a premium of around £17,000 over a comparably engined and trimmed X5, although the brand would correctly point out that if you were to equip an X5 to X7 standards, then the price difference between those two cars would be considerably less. Uh, do bear in mind that an X5 can also be ordered with seven seats. Uh, those are optional fold-out third row seats that cost around £1,400 more, although obviously it would be a great deal more cramped than the third row seating that's on offer here. Uh, the Bavarian maker hopes that its largest SUV might be considered as an alternative to its 7 Series luxury saloon. Uh, we're not so sure about that, but for reference, let's tell you that a comparably engined and trimmed 7 Series would save you less than £3,000 over an X7, and it would cost more in long wheelbase form. So certainly an X7 would seem to deliver a lot more car for the money. Talking of cars that would deliver more for the money, this one's closest rival, the Mercedes GLS, can slightly undercut BMW pricing. Most buyers of this Munich model will be spending around £75,000 on an X7 in 265 horsepower X-Drive 30D M Sport form, and for that kind of money, you could get a Merc GLS 400D with the same kind of seven-seat layout, similarly sporty trim, AMG line premium, and a Gutsia 330 horsepower diesel six beneath the bonnet. Mercedes can also also sell you a GLS 350D variant that usefully undercuts a base X7 xDrive 30D. And the GLS is also available in a Mercedes AMG 63 petrol guise uh, if you want an alternative to the X7 M50i. In all its forms though, you'll find an X7 to be a significantly more agile thing than a GLS. Are there other luxury SUVs that could closely rival what's on offer here? Well, not really. Uh, you could talk about various BMW X5-sized luxury SUVs with seven seats, say a Volvo XC90, an Audi Q7, a Land Rover Discovery, or a Range Rover Sport fitted out with optional third-row chairs, but they're already a size below this X7, and those models can't really fit adults in their third-row seats with any degree of long-distance comfort, which is, of course, why they cost 10 to 15,000 pounds less. Still, if you were only going to use this car's third row chairs for kids anyway, a plushly specified XE90, Q7 or appropriately specified Range Rover Sport might appeal as an alternative here. And what about if money is no object and you're minded to consider an X7 as a candidate for space in one of the oak frame garages in your country manor house? Uh, maybe it's something for the au pair to use on the school run. Well, you're probably already aware that you can't have a seven seat format in a Range Rover and you can't have three seating rows in a Rolls Royce Cullinan either, which means uh, if the Mercedes GLS doesn't appeal, your only other luxury SUV option would be to buy a Bentley Bentayga, uh, the diesel version of which costs around £65,000 more than a base diesel X7 and pay extra for that car's optional third seating row. But an optional third row is always a cramped third row. In any case, it's the X7 that's actually the bigger of those two cars and size matters when you're a multi-millionaire, or so we're told anyway. If having considered all that, you've concluded it is an X7 that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous BMW has been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Now, as well as X-Drive four-wheel drive, all models get the sport version of BMW's eight-speed Steptronic auto transmission, which means that launch control is standard and an adaptive two-axle air suspension setup with 80 millimeters of five-level height adjustment, a setup that can also drop the rear of the car Car to facilitate easy loading. In addition, of course, as with every BMW, there's drive performance control, so you can fine-tune throttle, steering, and gear change responses via Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport, and Adaptive modes. Standard dynamic damper control means those settings will also tweak ride quality too. Uh, we also really like the Parking Assistant Plus, which takes care of the acceleration, braking, steering and gear changes necessary to manoeuvre into a space. It includes a clever reversing assistant, which remembers the steering movements made during the vehicle's last forward manoeuvre and replicates them when moving backwards. So, for example, it will take over when you're reversing out 
out of a parking position that you drove into the previous night. Or it controls the car if you have to reverse backwards for up to 50 yards. It's really clever. Beyond all that, the X7 kit list is appropriately extensive with uh, even base trim delivering quite a lot. To be specific, you get big 21-inch alloy wheels, full LED headlights, front fog lamps, LED tail lamps, uh, roof rails, a rear view parking camera, all-round parking sensors, acoustic glazing, a two-section powered tailgate, auto headlamps and wipers, run-flat tires, an alarm, aluminium running boards and soft-closed doors that shut themselves if you don't shut them properly. Uh, uh, refreshingly, metallic paint is standard too, although some of the available shades can only be had with M Sport or full M variants. Uh, this test car's carbon black finish, for example. Inside, seven-seater fit is standard with powered erection and retraction for the second and third row, although there is, alternatively, an optional six-seat layout. We'll get to that in just a moment. Um, whatever the seating layout you've chosen, you'll get BMW individual extended merino soft leather upholstery and the front seats will be of BMW's particularly supportive comfort design. Plus, of course, they'll feature heating and electric adjustability with memory settings. All X7s also feature a panoramic glass sunroof, cruise control and automatic four-zone air conditioning with separate controls for middle row passengers. Uh, you additionally get a sport leather steering wheel, heated second row seats, an auto dimming rear view mirror, a wireless phone charging mat and also an instrument panel that's wrapped in Sensatec stitched man-made leather. Uh, we also like the fine wood, fine line, brown stripe, high gloss interior inlays. Cabin lighting is of theatrical importance in a car like this too. You get a classy ambient lighting system with six color tones and a variety of settings. And there's a welcome light carpet which illuminates across the ground to guide you into the cabin when you unlock the doors at night. Additionally included is a luggage compartment package which gives you an electronically adjustable cover for the luggage compartment, uh, rails for the cargo bay floor and a storage net on the left-hand cargo bay wall. Uh, let's also talk about vehicle access. Now, we're pleased to see that the standard spec includes BMW's achingly cool BMW display key with its built-in color screen. Uh, amongst other things, that clever key allows remote control of the ventilation system. So, for example, you can warm the car up or cool it down while you're having your breakfast. And on the key screen, you'll be able to check whether you have closed the doors, uh, when the next service is due, and how much fuel you've got. Uh, also standard is BMW. BMW's Comfort Access Package, which provides uh, not only keyless entry, but also remote powered closing of the two-piece tailgate that can be activated with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. Comfort Access additionally allows you to open this BMW with an Android phone. Uh, the unlocking function works with an NFC chip, which the brand says is harder to hack than the standard key. Plus, you can also send locking and startup access uh, for your X7 to up to four friends. And because their BMW profile can be stored as part of the brand's so-called open mobility cloud, your X7 will automatically set itself to those people's preferred driving settings when they use the car. Now, if you aren't an Android phone user, uh, you could alternatively use the BMW key card, which is supplied with the car. For the kind of money that you're being asked for here, you'd expect a very high level of technology and connectivity. And of course, you get it courtesy of the same live cockpit professional package that you'll find in the X5. Now, this gives you a 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster screen and a 12.3-inch center dash infotainment monitor, which can be accessed via a touchscreen, uh, via an iDrive controller, uh, via steering wheel buttons, or even by gesture control. Uh, there's voice control too, and not just any old voice control system. Uh, BMW has developed something that they call an intelligent personal assistant, which works a bit like the uh, Siri or Google Assistant systems that you might use in your phone. And that's there to answer questions that you can voice to the car as you drive it. Uh, through both the 12.3 inch cabin screens, you can access the standard 205 watt 
10 speaker hi-fi loudspeaker DAB audio system and the connected navigation setup which can make proactive route suggestions as you drive. Plus there's the latest 4G LTE connectivity, a Wi-Fi hotspot, a 20 gigabyte hard drive and Bluetooth phone pairing too which does remind us that BMW has at last included Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring on one of its mainstream models. Although annoyingly uh, that's only free for the first year Year. Access to the Android Auto system, that's still missing though. As you'd want in this flagship BMW model, there are plenty of the brand's really clever digital connectivity features too, including the full suite of BMW connected drive services. Uh, things like teleservices, which can decide when a garage visit's required and automatically book that in for you. And real-time traffic information, which warns you of congestion along your chosen route. Plus, there's also the company's suite of BMW vehicle apps that give you access to things like news reports and weather forecasts for up to four days ahead and information on highway tolls. In addition, the system can remotely update itself with fresh features and mapping upgrades. And of course, it will read out your text messages to you too. X7 buyers also get a standard concierge service that at the press of a button will give you direct access to an operator. That person will be able to answer almost any question about your journey as you drive it. Now, another feature that you might like is the parking space assistant. Now, that draws from the navigation destination that you've given the car. It will brief you well ahead of your arrival on the various parking options that will be available when you get to where you're going. And that uses an on-street parking information feature to tell you where the nearest multi-story car park is and also to tell you which nearby streets in your destination might offer parking spots. It's all very clever. What you need to bear in mind, though, is that some of these connected drive services are time-limited before becoming chargeable. That's certainly the case with the connected teaser package. Now, that will give you the Microsoft Office 365 feature that syncs in your emails and your calendar. That's only free for the first three months of ownership. Uh, the same is true of the Munich Maker's online connected music system. Now, that will give you access to the Deezer and Napster premium streaming services. Now, with this, you open an account for unlimited music access, and then you can listen to all your favorite songs, or you can download them onto the X7's incorporated infotainment system hard disk. Uh, you get a bit longer, three years, to play with the brand's remote services package. Now, that will allow you to control many aspects of your car's operation via your smartphone. And if you've owned another new BMW in the recent past, you'll maybe also recognize uh, the downloadable BMW Connected Plus app, which can learn your mobility routines, read your calendar, and even prompt you when to leave for scheduled journeys. Now, it'll get familiar with your most frequently traveled routes, and it'll memorize them as future destinations. Plus, the app will help you to find your car if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it. And it can also remotely lock or unlock the doors. Uh, all of that comes with standard X7 spec. If, though, you've decided on either an xDrive 40i uh, or an xDrive 30D diesel derivative, it's likely, as we suggested earlier, that you're going to want to upgrade yourself to more dynamic-looking M Sport trim. Now, the eye-catching look of this supposedly sportier spec is hard to resist with its high-gloss shadow line exterior trim, which extends to the roof rails, M aerodynamic body styling with special tailpipe finishes, and smarter M double spoke by color finish for the 21 inch alloy wheels through which you glimpse the calipers of the M Sport braking system. Inside there's anthracite BMW individual headlining, illuminated door sill inlays and M specific finishing for the steering wheel, the floor mats, the pedals and even the key. Plus the finewood fine line trim inlays get a black high gloss metal effect finish. As you expect, the potent M50D and M50i models get the full M Sport package too, but add to it quite a lot to justify the exalted and pricey status in the range of those two flagship variants. Uh, the wheels are stylish 22-inch V-spoke alloy rims, and there's distinct cerium grey finishing for the tailpipes, the mirror housings, the badge work, the side gills, and the front kidney grill. Uh, you get an upgraded Harman Kardon audio system and door sill finishes with illuminated M50D or M50i designations 
options front and rear. Plus, there's a throaty M Sport exhaust and an M Sport differential, which distributes drive torque evenly to both rear wheels and helps to get traction down through the corners. Plus, with full M Spec, you get integral active steering, which for greater cornering stability turns the rear wheels in either the same direction as those at the front or in the opposite direction, depending on vehicle speed. Okay, enough with the standard X7 spec. Let's get to the features you can order as options. Now, you can really go to town here, as is evidenced by the list price of this particular spec'd up M50D test model, well over £107,000. Now, firstly, let's cover off the really key things that any X7 buyer want to look at. Uh, we suggested earlier that the standard seven seat layout wasn't the only one you could choose for this car. Uh, the other option is a six seat layout, which costs £280 more and which replaces the conventional middle row bench with two individual comfort spec seats, similar to those at the front, each with their own armrests and cushioned headrests. Uh, that'll give second row folk more luxury and more room to spread out, plus it'll make it easier to get to the rearmost seating row. The downside to the six-seater package though, apart obviously from the fact that you'll be able to accommodate one fewer passenger, is that you won't be able to fold the second seating row flat in the way that you would be able to do with a normal bench, so you'll lose a great deal of ultimate luggage capacity. Still, if you never intend to use your X7 in a removal van style mode, uh, then that might not be an issue. Uh, once you've decided on your seating package, you'll need to get the driving dynamics of your X7 ownership nailed down. Uh, we mentioned earlier that the M50D and M50i models come with integral active steering. Here, the rear wheels are slightly turned in the same direction as the fronts during fast cornering, but in slightly the opposite direction from the fronts at parking speeds. Now, this allows for effortless lane changes. It helps you dart through city traffic, and it facilitates a tighter turning circle with easier parking. You can option in this setup to more ordinary standard and M Sport spec X7 variants. And if you do, you'll be given the additional option that M50D and M50i buyers have of paying extra for what the brand calls its Executive Drive Pro Pack. This is an electromechanical anti roll stabilization system which uses active stabilizers on the front and rear axles to compensate for cornering body roll uh, to an almost eerie extent at speed through the bends. What else? Well, you might also like to look at the visibility pack that we have here, which upgrades the headlamps to the brand's more powerful laser light status with its unique X design and adds into them a high beam assist feature and a vast forward range of 600 meters. If you prioritize on tarmac performance and you're buying a 30D or 40i model with M Sport trim, you'll be offered the choice to pay extra for the Rorty M Sport exhaust system. If, as is much less likely, you're buying a 30D or 40 model and your priorities in X7 ownership lie in regularly driving off a paved service, then you'll want to consider an investment of around £2,500 in the brand's X off-road pack. This includes underguard protection elements, a mechanical differential lock and four extra off-road driving modes, X sand, X rocks, X gravel and X snow. Plus you get special off-road interfaces for the two fascia screens and BMW also includes its M Sport differential in the X off road pack because that increases traction on loose surfaces. The X off road pack can't be had with an M50D or an M50i. Right, on to luxury stuff. Come on, you've earned the chance to spoil yourself a bit here. An optional feature that's difficult to resist is the Sky Lounge two-part panoramic glass roof, which includes 15,000 graphic patterns that generate an adaptable ceiling display reminiscent of a starlit sky. It's brilliant. We'd also want the premium package, which has been fitted here. Now that gives you uh, massaging and cooled ventilation for the front seats, heat comfort warmth for the armrests and the steering wheel rim, cup holders, which either cool or heat your drinks and an ambient air package which infuses the interior with eight individually selectable scents. Uh, the premium package also includes a five zone air conditioning setup that adds a separately cooled zone in the very rearmost part of the car. Uh, the five zone air conditioning, the heat comfort pack and the ambient air package can also be ordered separately. 
You're probably also going to want to look at upgrading the audio system on 30D and 40i standard and M Sport models. You might want to pay extra for the mid range 464 watt nine channel Harman Kardon setup. And on all X7s, you'll be offered the option of upgrading to the thumping 20 speaker 1500 watt 20 channel Bowers and Wilkins diamond surround sound system we have here. Either of those audio options can also be included as part of the optional technology package, which also gives you a head up display a dash cam drive recorder and a whole portfolio of BMW's choicest driving assistant professional camera driven safety features. Now we'll get onto those in a few minutes when we brief you on safety. Uh, the head up display and the driving assistant professional pack can be ordered separately. As for other luxury features, well, you can add in powered rear sun blinds for the side windows. And if you do, then second row passengers will get a control panel for operating them that would also enable them to operate the powered sliding headliner that grows across that panoramic glass roof. Uh, you could further please the kids by ticking the box for the rear seat entertainment package. Now that incorporates a couple of 10.2 inch touchscreens, uh, remote controls, wireless headphones, and also a Blu-ray player, plus an extra cost, you could also build in a TV function plus tuner. On to aesthetics. Uh, now, if you're one of those 40i or 30D X7 buyers who couldn't resist the allure of M Sport trim, your dealer will prevail on you to pay more for the M Sport Plus package, which gives you larger 22 inch V spoke M light alloy wheels, some protection glazing, extra high gloss shadow line exterior trim, and the M Sport exhaust system. Uh, exterior trim elements in satin aluminium or high gloss chrome are optional. And if you're really determined to pay BMW more for your choice of paint color, an exclusive of sunstone metallic finish is available. Plus there are various uh, different 21 and 22 inch wheel choices if you don't like the ones that are provided with your chosen trim level. Uh, as for the inside, well, the Merino leather upholstery is offered at a choice of five colours. And if you really like it, you can pay around £2,700 extra for the BMW individual full Merino leather package, which extends the covering of stitch hide across the instrument panel and the upper sections of the door cards. If you don't mind nearly doubling that spend, then you can have the same full Merino leather package with a more exclusive ivory white night blue finish. Uh, what else? Well, you could have an Alcantara headliner, Plus, if you avoid entry-level trim, subtly striped M seat belts are available too. And you can add in different styles of cabin trim inlay in black, brown or silver ash grain, poplar, or as in this case, uh, shiny piano black. There's also an available crafted clarity glass finish package for the gear knob, the fascia volume controller, the iDrive controller, and the start-stop button. As for practicality as well, of course, you can add in a tow bar. It's of the electrically folding variety, of course. Uh, for the cabin, there's an optional traveling comfort system that adds in a couple of extra USB ports at the front and multifunction brackets for the front seat backs to which rear seat folks can attach things like tablets. Uh, most buyers will probably want the luggage compartment separating net, although you can only have that on the seven seat models. So enough with standard kit and options, let's get on to consider safety provision. Now, BMW's latest large SUVs have had to meet more stringent safety testing than any of their predecessors, hence this X7's particularly stiff wide body shell. This can pass stringent Euro NCAP challenges like the side pole test, which requires the passenger cell not to deform if the cars crash sideways into a rigid pole at 20 miles an hour, simulating a real world impact against a pole or tree. In such a situation, this X7's can an airbags could be a lifesaver and of course there are also the usual twin front and side bags too plus a driver's knee bag as you'd expect there are front and rear isofix child seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control primarily dsc plus stability control and dtc traction control uh, there's a trailer stabilization function which will stop trailer sway if you have one fitted and hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions there's plenty of braking peace of mind too with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CBC, cornering brake control and the neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and they're advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. Uh, you will also get a multi-collision braking function that in the event of an impact will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. 
tire pressure monitoring is standard too, as is a speed limit info display, which pictures speed signs as you pass them and then displays them for you on the dash. Another neat safety feature fitted as standard across the range is the Attentiveness Assistant, which monitors you for signs of drowsiness. Now, this X7 is one of the first BMW models to operate this setup with an in-cabin camera rather than with steering wheel sensors. Uh, the camera constantly scans your eyes for signs of undue exhaustion. The Intelligent Personal Assistant voice system can help here too. Uh, if you were to say, hey, BMW, I'm tired, it would trigger a program that would adjust the lighting mood, the cabin temperature and music to try to make you feel more awake and alert. Now we'll also highlight the standard BMW emergency call with teleservices system which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. Now this system not only gives them your exact GPS location but it also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how many airbags burst and so on. If you were to have a crash it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be. And that's a potentially life-saving difference. In recent times, this setup has been further improved to also automatically activate after low speed collisions, which are below the threshold for airbag deployment. Immediately after the impact, it flashes up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistance service directly. Now we should further mention that to meet current customer expectations, a full range of camera-driven safety features is included. BMW groups the main ones in its Active Guard Plus intelligent safety package, uh, the key element of which, as you might expect, is autonomous braking, or as the Munich maker calls it, front collision warning with city braking. Now this system works as these kinds of setups usually do. At over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards, and if it detects one, you'll be warned and the brakes will be preconditioned for maximum effectiveness. Uh, should you be traveling at under 30 miles an hour and you're not responding to a detected hazard, the brakes will automatically be applied. Uh, that will reduce the severity of any resulting accident and will hopefully alleviate it altogether. Uh, there are two other standard Active Guard Plus features, lane departure warning with steering impulse. Now that alerts you if you cross lane delineating lines and speed limit information that pictures road signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. If you want more in terms of camera driven safety tech, you're going to have to stump up for the extra cost driving assistant professional pack, which also includes the choicest part of BMW's uh, autonomous driving technology. Uh, there's a lot here and some of the features interact with each other, but we will try to talk you through what this professional pack includes as clear as we can. So let's start with the autonomous driving elements that are primarily designed for highway driving. Uh, there are basically two of these, a steering and lane control assistant makes corrective steering interventions at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour although you still have to keep your hands on the wheel at all times. Now we found that this works particularly well in heavy traffic plus we also like the way that it can guide the vehicle through narrow channels such as those that you'd find through roadworks. In addition there's active cruise control now that will regulate your distance to the car in front and it can if necessary even slow you right down to a stop and and then start you off again. The other elements of the driving assistant professional pack are based around various clever camera driven features which address different safety needs in different kinds of uh, highway environments. So let's start off with the things that uh, might help you out in town driving. Take the approach control and person warning with city braking function for example. And now that builds on the city braking capability of the standard front collision warning system that we mentioned just now. Uh, in town it can specifically pick out pedestrians or cyclists that you may not have seen and quickly warn you of their appearance and if necessary it will brake the car automatically to avoid them. Uh, what else? Well as the name suggests wrong way warning uh, makes 
a huge fuss if you forget yourself and you end up going the wrong way down a one-way street. Uh, priority warning, that issues a warning in situations in which the right of way needs to be yielded based on street sign signage, uh, stop signs or give way signs, for example. Plus there's crossroads warning. Now that will alert you to traffic coming at you from the sides at a crossroads and it'll break the car if you try to uh, dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle. Plus, there's also a speed limit assistance system to work with the speed limit information set that we just mentioned, uh, which, if that's activated, will automatically always regulate your speed to the prevailing limit to ensure that you never get zapped by a speed camera again. Well, in theory, anyway. Get beyond the city limits in your X7 and other driving assistant professional pack features are there to help you. Uh, that approach control and person warning with city braking function that we just mentioned will work at cruising speeds too. Uh, it shows you if you're too close to the vehicle in front before, if necessary, it takes braking action if you don't respond. Uh, there's also a lane keeping assistant with active side collision protection. Now this incorporates side collision warning and lane change warning and it's a package of technology that works to stop you from pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. At the same time, adding in light steering intervention that will ease you back to where you ought to be on the road, uh, should you have veered offline. And we also like the evasion aid, which gives you extra steering assistance in critical situations where it's still possible to avoid an accident. Uh, say, for example, someone suddenly pulls out in front of you or you suddenly have to make a dramatic lane change to avoid slow moving traffic. It's all very reassuring. Now you won't be expecting an X7 to be particularly cheap to run, and it isn't, uh, but we can at least reassure you uh, that the operating costs won't be a great deal different from those of a comparable X5. Uh, now both these top BMW SUV models benefit from the installation of the brand CLAR, Cluster Architecture Platform, uh, which fashions all the body's hinged panels, the front wings, and some core structural elements from aluminium. Without that, well, you can only imagine what this car might weigh. As it is, top versions are getting close to the 2.5 tonne mark. The official WLTP combined cycle fuel figures suggest that the volume 265 horsepower X-Drive 30D variant is capable of recording up to 33.6 mpg on the combined cycle and 171 grams per kilometer of NEDC rated CO2. For this more powerful 400 horsepower N50D diesel variant, the respective figures are up to 31.4 mpg and 186 grams per kilometer. Either way, you're looking at a benefiting kind taxation rating of 37%, which, by the way, applies to all available X7 variants. A rival Mercedes GLS can't match that. In GLS 400D form, that Mercedes manages a slightly better combined cycle fuel figure, up to 35.8 mpg, but a significantly worse emissions reading, uh, 208 grams per kilometre. Both X7 diesel variants do of course comply with the current Euro 60 temp emission standard which dictates that they must have a gasoline particulate filter. Uh, BMW's blue performance technology further adds a particulate filter, an oxidation catalyst, an NOx absorption catalyst and an SCR catalyst with AdBlue injection. You'll probably be familiar with AdBlue by now because most modern Euro 6 diesel power plants use it. It's a urea additive that mixes with the hot exhaust gases from the engine. Uh, as the urea combines with these fumes, it turns many of the harmful chemicals into nothing more noxious than water and nitrogen, and that's what makes up most of the Earth's atmosphere. So you can tell all that to the barstool experts who talk as if diesel cars are alone responsible for smogging up our cities. Now these people would presumably prefer that you considered one of the petrol models instead, so let's give you the figures for those. Uh, the X-Drive 40i variant manages up to 24.8 mpg and 199 grams per kilometre, while the top M50i delivers up to 21.9 mpg and a smoky 248 grams per kilometre. 
Across the range, various efficient dynamics technologies are used to keep the running costs in check. Uh, now, there's an engine auto start stop system, as you'd probably expect, and at highway speeds, the cruise control can seamlessly decouple the engine from the transmission to reduce friction and to consequently save fuel. Now, of course, uh, the driver will also need to do his or her part. Now, the figures we just quoted assume that the car's being run in the drive performance control system most frugal eco pro mode in this setting the air conditioning and the power steering only work when required to save energy and what's called a proactive driving assistant is activated now this links in with this BMW's professional navigation system and it enables the car to detect braking situations in advance uh, such as when you're entering built-up areas speed limit zones corners and filter lanes and it prepares the drive system accordingly Accordingly. You want to keep a keen eye on how frugal your recent mileage has been. A journey data part of the Santa Dash Infotainment Screen's driving info section uh, shows a useful fuel graph to brief you on that. And the same section also has an energy flow graphic which shows you at any time what's being powered by what. And there's also a driving style analysis screen which will rate your driving with marks out of five for anticipation and acceleration. And it works out the extra mileage range that any more frugal driving has gained you. Optimised aerodynamics obviously make a significant difference to economy too. Um, BMW has developed what it calls air breathers and air curtains. Uh, these devices respectively located uh, behind and ahead of the front wheel arches. Now their purpose is to reduce turbulence and therefore drag in the area around the front wheels. In addition, every X7 has an active Airstream kidney grille at the front end with slats that stay closed when initially you first move off, so helping the engine to warm up to operating temperature as quickly as possible. Once that's achieved, the slats then open to aid cooling, but they're able to close again at higher speeds to improve the car's slippery shape. Routine maintenance is dictated by condition-based servicing, uh, which monitors oil level and engine wear, and takes into account how long it's been and how far the car has traveled since its previous garage visit. Now you can check all of this using menus in the iDrive center dash display in the center dash screen's car section that will tell you engine oil level, service requirements, and your add blue level. Plus the car will give you four weeks notice of when a checkup's needed so you can have uh, plenty of time to book it in. A teleservices feature comes as part of the BMW Connected Drive services that you can access through the iDrive infotainment system. Via this, before each service appointment is due, your X7 can automatically put in a teleservices call to your nominated BMW service centre, complete with detailed information on vehicle condition. Uh, you'll then get a call to arrange a service appointment, and that will be something that you'll have already budgeted for if, at the point of original purchase, you opted for one of the two fixed cost service inclusive or service inclusive plus packages which cover you for five years or 50,000 miles. Uh, with these after a one-off payment uh, which can be as little as around 400 pounds you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during that period and that includes items such as oil, spark plugs and filters. What else might you need to know? Um, well, you're obviously looking at a full luxury car level of vehicle excise duty, £450 a year for the first five years of ownership. We'll also tell you that BMW's warranty only lasts for three years, but it does include an emergency breakdown service, and at least it isn't mileage limited. Uh, there's a three-year paintwork warranty and the usual 12-year anti-corrosion warranty. As for insurance groupings, well, all X7s are rated at a top-of-the-shop group 50. The other big ownership cost with a luxury contender of this kind lies with depreciation, and that's something that can often be easily forgotten about in the excitement of ordering a new car. Resid Jewels for a completely new model line are always a little difficult to predict, but we wouldn't expect the retained value here to be too much different from that of a comparable X5. Uh, independent experts reckon that a typical X7 xDrive 30D M Sport variant will be worth 49.5% of its original value after three years and 60,000 miles.
really exotic, super luxury SUVs like the Bentley Bentayga, the Lamborghini Urus, the Rolls-Royce Cullinan and the Range Rover are all very well, but they only actually seat five people. If you want to seat seven with ultimate SUV luxury and you want something a bit nicer than, say, an Audi Q7 or Volvo XC90, until now, your only option was the Mercedes GLS. Now, though, we think you'll be drawn to this X7. There'll be plenty of people who will say that this car is too big for our market. They said that about the Mercedes GLS when it was launched and they were proved wrong. Uh, they will be again here in an SUV market full of so-called seven-seaters that can actually only take small children in their rearmost pews. The X7's capacity to properly accommodate seven adults is refreshing. Don't be misled. Apart from a Mercedes GLS, no other SUV can do that. And that Merc struggles to match the dynamic capability of this BMW, both on and off tarmac. Is that important? Well, only you can decide that. If it isn't, the slightly cheaper sticker price of a GLS might be a factor. Both these contenders, though, can end up being fearsomely expensive once you've added in a few well-chosen options, in which case you'll want something pretty special in return. Now, we're not completely sure that this BMW's cabin provides it. Everything's beautifully finished and lovely to touch, but it's essentially the same as you get in a 5 Series or an X5. And if you find yourself paying close to six figures for this car, you might be inclined to want something slightly more exclusive. BMW argues that options like the Skyview panoramic roof, the crafted clarity cabin decor and the Bowers & Wilkins diamond audio system, all also available on the X5, will be enough to imbue this car with an appropriately exotic ambiance. If you agree and you can afford to buy and run such a substantial piece of Bavarian automotive real estate, there's very little else not to like here. This X7 will have a distinctive appeal if you like the brand's cool sporting vibe, you have a large family, and you want the very best. Size matters, but then you always knew that, didn't you?